Hey, good day, everyone. I'm uh, Rob Espero with the Viral Volley Podcast. And I have a unique and very special episode, one that's near and dear to my heart because uh, I've got my, my main man from UC Irvine, Dante Chakravorty. I, I, I kind of recognize the other guy to his right uh, <laughs> from somewhere, but no, in all honesty, uh, another good man and a great family, both of them, uh, TJ DeFalco, um, and who are happen to be playing together. And I'm probably going to butcher the name because my Italian accent is non existent. Calipo Tono Calabria Viva Valencia. That's oh, pretty bad. good. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, they're playing together. So we actually have a former Big West rivalry powwow. Now, you know, there's peace and harmony in the world because Irvine does get along with Long Beach State. Uh, so TJ and Dante, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, Rob, thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. Looking forward hey, to it. Hey, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, seeing personalities like you guys excel on the international level is such a great thing to see. So I definitely want to, you know, jump at that opportunity because as we all know, like the best volleyball in the world is being played in Europe right now. And that's where you guys are playing. But, you know, with the recent events, <laughs> I actually can't even call it recent, it's just happening the last no. eight, nine months has been COVID, COVID, COVID. So I wanted to ask both you guys from your perspective what the situation has been like in Italy with COVID and how has the Superliga been affected? You know, what's it like in the arenas, trainings, and, and that whole international pro experience? Yeah, uh, obviously COVID <laughs> is a real thing for everyone in the world and, and it's the same situation here. Uh, I know at the beginning it seemed like, oh, it's going on in Europe and it wouldn't get to the States. And now they're like, oh, it's worse in the States, whatever it is in Europe. but. From our, from our standpoint, we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure we can get all our games in on time uh, if we can, and otherwise just, just finding ways to play. I think it started for us just in the beginning of the season. We weren't able to really travel to play any friendly matches or anything like that, so we really had to start fast. And then, you know, dealing with the testing and the masks and the protocol, uh, it, I'm grateful for it because it knows it keeps us healthy, but it's definitely strange. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a te definitely a totally different experience with you know, coming off of a, the first time ever for over summer for four months, no, not doing anything. No, no volleyball was being played. No national teams were in session. No, nothing like that. And then coming back into the the pro team sessions and <clears throat> having a month and a half, two months to only train and not be able to play any friendlies, like you said. And then you and you have next thing you know you have a match in two weeks. You got to figure out how to how to gel as a team, to figure find the chemistry and all that stuff. And, and COVID has been a, a rough obstacle to say the least yeah um you'd mentioned in before we even went live was uh your team hadn't had an outbreak or yours and maybe one other team um what's been having to happen in the event that there have been outbreaks and change in schedule for you guys and we'll start with tj first uh in the event of an outbreak for the other teams from what we just what we'd heard um whatever team or whatever players were directly in contact, you know, within well, a certain amount of time with a diagnosis of, you know, on practicing, touching the same ball within a certain, they just have to, everyone in the team would pretty much have to be in a, like a precautionary quarantine until the, the true positives had come out. Thankfully we're so far from really any kind of civilization out here where we're staying um, away from all the big cities and all that stuff where we don't have, the the other temptations that the other teams have had to you know sift through and uh, and avoid you know going out to eat and doing all these stuff or doing other things in society where the, the usually the big groups of people we don't have any of that stuff down here so mm -hmm. in a way we're lucky in that, in that sense but and it, it takes a toll in the other way yeah anything to add Dante yeah I mean I think TJ got it all the only thing I would add is is like everything in the world there's a lot of uncertainty we we were. We had a match against Trento, for example, scheduled to play. We postponed it because they have one case. We have to see where more cases come from. Okay, we reschedule. We want to play again. We drive to the airport. We're in the airport waiting to get on the plane, and we get word one more positive, so they need to retest. So we drive home from the airport, which is, I mean, trap. I've never done that on a road trip, get all the way to the plane and, and turn around. And then we end up going to play them when they've got both setters out, and, and that kind of ends up being a storyline. So, you know, like TJ said, it's just trying to – adjust to what comes and, and do the best we can. Nice. Now, uh, given that, you know, given this time in history and, and in society, I imagine you guys being the uh, lone Yankees on your team, uh, you've, you spend a lot of time together. Um, where are you guys in relation to each other and how do you guys pass the time beyond the training and the matches? You go with Dante. Yeah. 
Uh, luckily, we live quite close to each other. So we're on a, I mean, we've got a really nice setup, to be honest. We're on this sort of resort here, and we've got these little, like, cottages uh, pretty close to each other. And right now, obviously, with COVID, no one's traveling. So the whole hotel and everything is empty. Um, we are definitely the only Americans, and with everything going on in the world, especially in America, uh, we do field a lot of questions, especially from teammates and stuff. Um, but for me, I don't know how TJ feels. It's been a lot of fun talking with the international guys and, you know, maybe guys have played with one American three years ago somewhere, and that's all they know about America. So for us to be able to kind of, not that neither, neither of us is experts on whether it's politics or social justice <laughs> or COVID, but at least give uh, some sort of, uh, some sort of point of view from, uh, from an American perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you, TJ? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, I'm incredibly thankful for the, the living situation we have. Um, like I said, we're out, we're about 20 minutes from town out in the middle of all these farmlands and these different crops of whatever field they're growing or in a bunch of animals and stuff. We're out in, on the top of a mountain and there's nothing, nothing around us. And then there's all of a sudden this five-star resort pops up and we are, uh, um, and it, we have a great living situation because like you said, the, the whole resort is empty. We have the entire resort to ourselves. So unlike the people that are living in like the city center or something like that, we can actually go out and go for a walk. We can go out and the, on the days that it's nice and somewhat sunny, we can go outside and venture around, but some of the other, other teammates that are in the city center can't leave their house. You know, mm -hmm. the only reason you can leave your house is to go to the grocery store or to go to practice or work. Yeah. There's, so there's nothing to do. So we're, we're, we're very blessed on that side of things. Yeah. Now where, just so for all of us who haven't been to Italy, whereabouts is Vivo Valencia in relation to the rest of uh, like Rome we talked about? Yeah, Vibo Valencia is in Calabria, so it's the southernmost region that is not Sicily. So it'd be like where the toes are in the high heel boot, if you kind of think about Italy like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are quite way, way, way south. Uh, a lot of the teams are right around Milano in the north. Uh, Modena, obviously, Milano, those types of teams, Ravenna, Verona, those types of teams. And then in the middle, you have Rome and then Perugia and Civitanova. So we're, we're quite a bit uh, south. We definitely are the only southern team. Yeah. You know, some of our listeners and viewers may wonder why Dante Chakravorty has a great Italian accent. Yeah, he's got the good looks from dad, but the Italian accent comes from the lovely mom, Lucia, uh, which uh, I got to meet a few times at UC Irvine. So it's sounding good there, Dante. You make your mom proud. Oh, that's good. I'm glad my mom will be proud. I'll have my mom proud and my sister saying, why are you trying to speak like an Italian and just say the words normally? So it'll be a fun <laughs> And then TJ, for obvious reasons, it's already in him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, did you guys spend Thanksgiving together? Because that happened just last week. I mean, did you guys do anything special for the uh, the day? We uh, we tried to. We we asked around and see to the different butchers in the in the city if see if there was actually some sort of any way possible to get a full turkey mm -hmm. or anything along those lines, and there was absolutely nothing. So we did a nice ritualistic dinner of rice and chicken on Thanksgiving. <laughs> it was a bird. That's all that mattered. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. we eat together all the time. So I can't say it was that special, but it was fun <laughs> uh, traveling back from, from Trento together that day. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey Dante, uh, from what I can gather, this is your first season playing professionally abroad. Is that correct? Or is this your second? I played last year in Italy too. I was, uh, so I get to play here as an Italian. So very, uh, first in Viva Valencia. Sorry? First, in, your Viva first in Viva Valencia. Right. Okay. So last year I was waiting on uh, my change of federation to become an Italian player. So mm -hmm. I bounced around, actually spent some time here in Vibo, went up to Ravenna, and then finished in A3 in, in Puglia. But this is my first year in the, in the Superliga. Well, how's, how are your first two seasons uh, playing professionally? Because obviously, both of you are considered rookies. I mean, TJ's only had two seasons as well, but how's it been for you particularly paying, playing in internationally and in Italy? Yes. I mean, it's definitely a jump in level, uh, which has been a lot of fun, honestly. Um, honestly, playing against a guy like TJ in, in college, you're, yeah, I mean, TJ and Kyle and Josh and those guys, I think really set the standard for us. And here, I mean, TJ is a great player, but there, there are a bunch of TJs all around. So it's, you really got to gotta up your level. Um, for me, getting back to Italy, where my family's from, uh, was awesome, like as an experience. And even though I wasn't on one team for the beginning, being able to kind of bounce around and get different experiences, I, I really loved. And being able to pick up the language, again, honestly, was, was huge. Because this year, it's, uh, it's a lot easier being able to, to speak both. Uh, so I was really lucky that way.
Yeah. How about you, TJ? Second season, same team. Obviously did some good things last year and they wanted to bring you back. But uh, as a whole, your two-year experience, how's it been for you? Um, it's been very interesting. Nothing I like I'd ever heard. And that only goes along with the fact that it was COVID mm -hmm. for both my years. Um, but one of the things that I like to say to, to the people that I was talking about last year was, man, what a first year, you know, to come out, out of college, graduate, do win the championships, do all that kind of stuff. And then come in ready to play a professional my first year of this team, uh, whatever level it may be, or anything like that. And then come in halfway through the season and everything gets shut down. You know, this, yeah. this pandemic right, hits the world and then everything is just different. Um, yeah. if, you know, and then staying in quarantine and then figuring out how to get home and you, you're stuck in this foreign country and you, there may not be a way for you to get home for months or you, there's no idea about anything. And then, like I said, about, the, about this time over summer, just, there's nothing to do over summer. No volleyball to be played for the first time in six years for me. It was, it was, just, it was an extraordinary feeling and um, experience. And then coming back where we're already in COVID, coming back to the, uh, the country where I left before. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, I, I, my first two years have been very, like no first two years or any years like any other with anything. It's been very interesting, but it's been a great learning process and a growing process because that is just a bunch of a uh, bunch of little obstacles that I have to get over and learn how to grow and learn how to figure out how to adapt and everything like that. So it's been, it's been, I mean, it made it much tougher, but it made me much of a stronger mentally and being able to deal with that kind of stuff. Right. So it's been, a, it's been a blessing in disguise for sure. Well, the other thing is this, and, and with both of you formerly being big West rivals and now collaborating on the same team, how is it like uh, knowing to have someone very, that you're familiar with, on the same team and i mean as close as you guys you guys saw each other two three four times a year you know including the preseason and now you're playing on the same team uh, how's it like training together uh you know improving fr uh, relationships and, and and all that how's it been for you two yeah i mean it's, it's been super helpful as you can imagine having someone with the same nationality on the team as you it makes all the world difference but i didn't know if you knew this but we we've been playing together and against each other and with each other for six or seven years oh, no. eight years. years 14 so this would be the, well, like we, the 10th year in a row i've played either with or against you yeah because we did the usa pipeline we did the club stuff yeah. we did the, all that and we, so we we so i mean especially having someone like that who had had so much background and um and like a understanding of where each other's been and come from it's mm -hmm. it, it makes it so much easier to have someone to talk to about various mental issues or oh, I miss my family or I'm going through this, I'm going through that, or just being able to speak English fluently because someone for like me, I don't, I haven't had the, <clears throat> the drive quite yet to learn fully Italian. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> we got Dante now. He'll teach you, right? <laughs> Give him one or two more years here. He'll be, uh, he'll be with the top club speaking fluently just like Michael. <laughs> yeah. But it, just just having the, the peace of mind of being able to not speak broken English and have a, a a level understanding of what the conversation is doing, where is it going, and all that kind of stuff is is really just peaceful. Yeah. How about you, Dante? Yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, like TJ said, uh, man, we've been playing either with or against each other for a long time now, and uh, mostly against. So it's always nice to have a guy you played against and you get to know him, and you're like, man, I really wish I could hate this guy, but he's a pretty good dude. <laughs> Uh, which luckily I knew a little bit before going into school, but, um, yeah. no, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, and it's really nice to have another American here and, and just to be able to, to chat and figure out, okay, can we find soy sauce in the grocery store? Okay. We found a taco meat here. Like, let's try <laughs> like this. Uh, you know what Thanksgiving is. So it's, it's a lot of fun. We you know, just eat prosciutto and, and pasta for each meal. Uh, I would love to do that, honestly, but, uh, <laughs> Even Italian food, uh, every now and then, it, it is nice to switch it up. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, let's go and, and talk a little bit about the team that you're on. Uh, Viva Valente or Tano Calipo, Calabria. <laughs> Such a long name. Uh, <laughs> so last season, total of four wins. Currently, your team is just under the, what looks like the midway point through the season. You know, obviously with COVID, that can change, you know, with the amount of matches, but... So actually, I, I think we have enough to eight wins as of last night. You now stand in third place. What has got your team going through in the recent weeks? And did you expect this kind of success during the season? And we'll start with Dante and then go over to TJ. Yeah, uh, 
this this club is awesome because it is the only club in the south and they and they're super warm and they love representing but it, it's definitely not knowing known as one of the the big four clubs here uh and and the difference in finances and budget here is a real thing it's it's very hard to uh to play above your level uh and we've it's been awesome so far again this is my first year here so i i don't really know what happened last year but I think a lot of our success comes from the fact that the guys we have, especially the guys that are playing big minutes for us, they get along and they're always working on trying to be better. Uh, we started the season with two really rough losses. And I think a lot of people were like, okay, same old Vivo, like that'll be, that'll be an easy win for everyone. And the, the guys on the court to their credit have just every week just chipped away and, and found, found ways that we can win against some of the best players in the world. It's, it's been really fun to be a part of. Yeah. How about you, TJ? Um, it, it's, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's been kind of like a, a surprise for me as well. Um, just because of last year and the, the team, team chemistry and the, the vibe around the coach and, the, and the, um, the relationship between the players last year wasn't the brightest, wasn't the best, wasn't the, we'll say, we'll say happiest of the possible program mm -hmm. outlines. But um, in the, in the coming into this year, man, it is completely different. One of the things that the, the, the one of the Italian older guys said on this team was, man, I don't want it to be the same as last year. Last year, we were heavily clicked, um, where the Italians would hang out with the Italians. The, the French guy was hanging out with the French guys, and, and it was me and one other Italian guy that everyone kind of was not really uneasy about, but they, they had their, their groups. They had their right. thing. They had their comfortabilities where they didn't really stray from. They were the outliers, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. And so one of the players from last year said this year was like that, that was one of the reasons why the, the player culture was so negative. Um, and it, you can't flourish in such a negative environment day yeah. in and day out. Um, and, and especially having a new coach, new coach is a godsend because that having as, as a toxic as a coach as we did last year and just like the, the overall him not knowing the the vibe of everyone and the, the players being able to work together and then him being like um, a, a force on the outside, like the needle in the balloon just didn't, it didn't cope well at all. Um, yeah. So everything this year has really come together full circle and, you know, been, been about um, understanding players wants and needs on and off the court. Uh, Cause off the court stuff last year was non-existent. It didn't matter in any way, shape or form. It was, if you're doing your job, you're doing your job fine, but that's all we care about. Yeah. So there's a lot more of that. And the coach is great. The staff is great. And, and more, more than anything, the, the, the guys on this team are just good guys. You know, they're, yeah. they're happy to strike up a conversation about some silly stuff that went on over the weekend or, you know, silly conversations every time we sit down and have lunch with, you know, the, the French guys and stuff. And that stuff builds camaraderie that can be reflected on the court. I yeah. think that's huge. Oh, for sure. Um, for both of you, uh, I guess it's now three matches ago, uh, based upon the time I've done my notes, but um, Vivo Valencia upset a league leading Civitanova, if I said that correct, boasts the Ross with Osmani Wantorena, Luciano Di Cecco, Yolandi Lille. Um, amazing match. And TJ, you had 18 points, 16 kills, and two aces. But I, what was it about your team that was able to pull off? I mean, they were undefeated going into that match against you guys. And, and I know Dante, both you guys are super cerebral players. And that's what I've gathered from Coach Knipe and Coach Niven. I mean, you guys know the game, but what was happening on the court that, that gave you guys that win against such a highly touted roster? Let's start with Dante. Yeah, uh, man, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Before I say anything else, it was <laughs> awesome uh, to play against guys of that caliber. I mean, especially the Czech or Leal, like these are people that, uh, I know both of us watched on YouTube growing up yeah. and now we're, we're, you know, in the game and Hey, let's make a game plan and, and try to beat them. And I think that game for us, uh, for me was a testament to the, to the guys, especially that we have playing that know themselves. Uh, I mean, TJ is not an old guy here. Like you said, he's a young guy here. And he, I think he figured out in a lot of ways how he could score and score points there. Our other outside Tebow, he did the same thing. We're not a team that's going to, you know, do what Wilfredo Leon does and just bomb away over and over and over. Like we have skills that I don't think a lot of people have. We're really good in reception. We're really good in defense. TJ and Tebow are good at hitting all sorts of different types of balls. And, and they were good about playing the game plan that, that we designed, that they designed to put us in the best spots. And, mm -hmm. and that's why you play the game. <laughs> right. Even against a team like Lube, if, if we do what we're doing right 
and you catch them just on the wrong stuff and let their spectacular plays go and realize they're worth one point, uh, anything can really happen. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Teach? Yeah, for me, it was, well, I mean, afterwards, well, I don't think either of us stopped saying, wow, I can't believe we won for <laughs> about four hours. <laughs> All months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it was, if when thinking back on it right after the match was, I think it was, we didn't care about how intimidating the other team was. We didn't care about the names, the stature, the the record, the the amount of money one player on that guy, that team gets. You know, it, it was, we came into that game with a game plan and then a hard week of practice and nothing but hard work. And we just played our game to the best of our ability. Um, we didn't get caught up in the, you know, this this is Leal who makes way more money than eight guys on our team or any, or Luciano Ducheco who's, one of the top three in the world, yeah. you know, we didn't get caught up in that. We went out there and played our game. And I think it, like Dante said, we caught him in that moment of maybe a little bit of a lax in their brain. And uh, where they were like, Oh, this is, this is a team from Viva Valencia last year. They had four wins. I mean, what, what more, you know, they only changed a few players. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what could they really did, like do for damage, you know? Right. And, and I think we caught him right there, right then. And then we started going and we put our, foot on the gas and we, they just couldn't catch up in the time. And uh, it was, it was perfect timing for all that stuff to go on and in line perfectly with that. And then we come out on top. Yeah. Well, actually it goes segue to my next question because um, anyone who follows your national volleyball recognize that, that both of you are competing against some of the biggest names in volleyball. Do you guys go through a, a wow factor when you compete against them and you see them in the same uh, arena as you and start with yeah. TJ? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. My first year, last year, we're going around playing all these different teams and with the, all these big names. It's just like a moment of awe. It's like, holy cow, I'm on the other side and I'm going to have to deal with that guy. Mm -hmm. Or just see him in the, you know, we're, we're on the same court. You know, it was a hundred percent. It was that feeling of, wow, this is, I've watched that guy and I've watched that guy for about eight years on YouTube and tried to emulate my game after him, what the certain things that he does. It's, yeah. it's insane to me that I'm actually going to have to go against him, you know, so. How about you, Dante? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think TJ said it, exactly how I would say it. And the only thing I would add is, is I've been so pleasantly, not even surprised, but just blown away with how nice some of these guys are. Like, uh, I think for me too, you build up some of these guys in your mind, even the American guys like, you know, Micah and Kavika and these guys that I've obviously watched, you know, being in the, in the U.S. And then after a game or at a servant pass, obviously with all the COVID restrictions, it's a little different. You're able to say, hey, like, yeah, especially for me, hey, what, what do you got for me? Like, you, right. you've been at the top of your game for this long. Like, uh, even the foreign guys, and they're all like, oh, oh, man, you know, keep your head up. Like, all like, and they, every guy we've talked to, I've talked to has been awesome uh, from different countries, speaking different languages. It's, uh, it's really cool to see that community. I think we had a really nice community back in the Big West and in California with, uh, with volleyball and, and globally, it's still there. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's bring our conversation back to home and current events here. Um, you know, bringing it to even particularly Southern California, what are your guys' thoughts on the impact of COVID on your alma mater? So obviously TJ, Long Beach State, Dante, UC Irvine, in the Big West and the NCAA. Um, have you guys spoken with any uh, former coaches and teammates in regards to what's been happening around here? Uh, we'll start with TJ. Um, the first thing that pops into my mind when I think about the the effect on not just my alma mater, but all schools in general is just, man, how, how bad I feel for that, for them, mm -hmm. in that situation. Because some of them, some of them maybe have gotten the chance to come back for the sixth year, mm -hmm. but that also is getting turned down because of COVID. And yeah. it's just, man, it's, like if, if I were in that situation where it was my junior year going into my senior year, the class went out and then, then like this year is my year, you know, I'm going to show them what I can do. And this is what I'm going to leave my stamp on my, my legacy on for my time spent in this school or anything, whatever school I, I would have gone to. And then it gets shut down by COVID. And then it's like, okay, am I going to make the decision to finish the school out with doing all the, all the online stuff and missing all in the, like the, the social in class, class, in-person classes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then am I going to decide to push back some classes and come back for next year, like a sixth year? or a fifth year or whatever the case may be. And it's just, a, and then that maybe gets taken away too. And right. I, I feel so bad for some of these people that really have pushed, you know, and trained and, and studied and did all this stuff for 
something like this to be the closing of their college years. Yeah. What about you, Dante? Yeah. Uh, I keep a pretty good touch with the UCI guys. And I know the, the craziest thing for me has been you'll, you'll talk to them one week and it's one way and you talk to them the next week and everything has completely changed. And, uh, uh, and I know that's kind of the situation worldwide, but uh, it's really tough. Like what TJ's saying, especially uh, the great thing about playing in college, maybe better than here is you're not just playing like you're on a team, you're going to school. There's so many parts of the game that aren't the, the on the court stuff. And, and I think a lot of guys lost that. I do got to say it talking to the guys at UCI, Joel, Scotty, uh, Pat, and Johnny, and all those guys, and Niff, man, I'm really proud of what they're doing. Uh, I know Niff's been preaching a long time to our guys, like, uh, we're going to be a team that's adjustable, like, we're going to deal with adversity, and this is something that I don't think anybody planned for, and, and I love, I absolutely love the way the guys, uh, the leaders, and the, and the leadership core we have on that team are, are handling it right now, and yeah. before anything else, I know TJ gave that whole speech, but I think he's just happy that no one else has won a title since, uh, <laughs> 2018. <laughs> He's just happy uh, Hawaii doesn't have his trophy before. Or by uh, nature of the carryover rule, Long Beach State has won three in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think he's ever going to let it go, man. <laughs> That's just, I, I love it. Oh, wish no, COVID no, keeps no, going. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, you know, you know, you did say the thing that the uncertainty has been crazy because even just in the last week. Teams got back into training last week, and then um, some schools, I won't disclose who, got a, a COVID infection, and they've shut down training for all the other athletic programs, um, and they've moved the, the training date to January 1st. Like USC men's, I saw some posts by uh, assistant coach Gary Sato. Uh, they're training in Galen, but I mean, we are on a mandated state lockdown right now, just as of last night. So. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to sports. I'm getting announcing gigs, but they're being canceled literally hours before they happen. So it's so uncertain. And yeah. uh, I mean, seeing what you guys are doing, it's been great to be able to watch you guys on the YouTube feed um, for, for, you know, the, the uh, Super League. And then also the guys are playing in Poland and, and France. So it's, I mean, at least some sports, we know it can happen in Korea. You know, Kyle Russell, another anteater. Sorry, TJ. I'll, I'll call some other Long Beach State guys on there. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Tuninga, he's playing well in Poland there. But uh, I mean, what they're doing fan-wise, uh, you know, they're at, they've actually allowed fans back into the arena at a 50% capacity. So, you know, there's hope. It can be done. Um, but I think we're still a ways off. And I'm just really hoping and praying that we can see an NCAA season. Because, I, I, you know, we, don't, we know the Big West is going to be intense for the next four or five, I mean, probably longer than that because of the talent that both UC Irvine and Long Beach State – you see Santa Barbara, even San Diego was on the rise. I mean, Hawaii, yeah. I mean, it was going to be a, a, a brutal, you know, beat down come at the uh, Big West tournament. So we're going to be missing out on a lot of these guys that you guys competed against, like Rado Parapunov, Colton Cowell, you know, uh, you know, of course, all the Long Beach State guys, Carlos Rivera, you know, uh, Simone Anderson. I, I miss seeing these guys play. So, you know, we're, we're definitely missing out on, on such a, a great – what could be great years for your programs. So, um, awesome. <clears throat> um, now last night, let's go to more recent events. Uh, that's why I had to change some numbers on the fly here since uh, me sending the notes to you, but you ended up playing uh, Modena Valley, Valley uh, Micah Christensen's team. And you know, I'm not going to say that you guys don't have the strength and power to do what you did, but that was a pretty hefty win for you guys a straight set victory. TJ, uh, if I got my stats right, 12 points, nine kills off three aces, but you guys all looked really good. You know, there's, you guys are dialing in all on cylinders. So talk about the match last night. We'll start with Dante. Yeah. Uh, it's, it was awesome. And I know it was talking about Lube and Trento and Modena now, and it was funny. We were sitting around the dinner table after the win at, at Modena and you're hearing guys that have played, some of these guys have played 300 matches in the super league and they're saying stuff like, man, that's the first time I've ever beaten Maldonado or that's the first time I've ever beaten Lube or swept Maldonado away or, or all these stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been really cool for us. I don't think we'll really understand the full significance maybe until we're uh, a little older in the league, um, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Uh, always fun going against another another American. And here in Italy, Maldonado is the, is the gold standard for volleyball culturally. Yep. Uh, they're selling out season tickets every year. Uh, five, you know, 5,000 season ticket holders are, are coming. Even this year where there weren't players – uh, weren't fans for most of the for most of the year. They're they're selling that stuff out. It's it's really a a, a temple, um, and to be able to get a win there is huge. 
uh, and it's just a testament to the guys we got out there and, and what they're able to do. Yeah. Anything you add, TJ? <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, this kind of, kind of goes along with what I said about Lube. <clears throat> it was one of those games that maybe there was an expectation, maybe there wasn't, whatever anybody wants to think, but it, all, all it came down to was us playing our game as best we possibly could. And we came out firing at all cylinders, and we caught fire and kept going and kept going and kept going, and then maybe – we caught him in like that little moment of down in their brain or down in their mind about all oh, the, we, the last time we played, we swept them. They didn't do anything, you know, this guy and this guy got pulled last game. So yeah, that's, we're kind of expecting the same kind of thing, results, anything like that. And, and then it turns completely different where it's the complete opposite. Right. And that's just staying in the moment and playing the game. We know we trained every single day in, 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 the, in our gym this week. And that's just applying it on the court. Now, did any of you guys get to talk to Micah after the match, or you guys pretty much separated immediately after the, the, the match is completed? Um, well, uh, we, I would have loved to have communicated with them. And the last time they came to us, we, we had a great time out after the match. We were hanging out, listening to music, talking with a bunch of the guys and stuff. And um, Unfortunately, they went into their, their locker room and they had their, their time with their coach and their team for – a, a, a unknown amount of time. So we weren't actually able to talk with them before we departed Modena, but I talked with them a little bit before, um, mostly just about the hair. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, uh, but other than that, no, not really, unfortunately. Uh, um, so let's look at the rest of the season. Um, what are the plans moving forward here at the near halfway mark of the season. Is that right? That this is at the halfway mark, so to speak? Because I think April is when the season ends for you guys. But I haven't really tried my best to keep up with COVID and all that, how they're, they're structuring these, these, uh, these playoffs and all that. But is it the halfway point for you guys? Yeah, we just played our yeah, second game of the second uh, rotation. Okay. The second half of the season. Right, so, okay. But our season, our regular season is supposed to end in February 15th. Okay, gotcha. Well, you moved into third place with the victory last night. And to your guys' knowledge, is this the best that the club has performed in its history? To your... uh, to, for my knowledge, no. I've talked to the president about various situations where there many years ago. He was telling the story to Dante, and I'm not going to lie. He told me. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, this is not by any means the best they've done, but it is a very – enlarged improvement from last season. So that's the only thing that I really care about. Anything you had there, Dante, about the uh, performance of the team and plans going forward? Yeah, uh, I think uh, for me, the plans going forward is kind of keep doing what we're doing and, and try not to focus on the on the giant picture and even even the standings and just, hey, we, we got Milano this week. That's a really good team. What what can we do to, to, to prepare to win that that one game and, and get to the end? And uh, I mean, we have goals of playoffs and all sorts of stuff. But um, as you know, in any sport you play, it's kind of you do what you can do today to, to help yourself tomorrow and go from there. Now, are there going to be any tournaments that, you know, kind of like Champions League that, that uh, Vivo Valencia will be competing in or are there like Italian Cup mini series that you guys do? And I try to navigate the sites as best as I can as an American with translation, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I'd rather just ask you guys flat out. <laughs> yeah, that stuff is, is fairly confusing for us. Well, coming from me from last year when I was coming from college, I had no idea about any of this kind of stuff. But all the admittance into those tournaments comes from the, the results of the season prior. Gotcha. So the top four of this last year's season, hypothetically, go into Champions League for the, each league. So mm -hmm. the top four go to Champions League, and then the top and the five through eight go into the Challenge Cup or yeah. something like that. I don't know all of it because I haven't experienced any of it. But – and then – in the beginning of the year, we, we played um, – before regular season started, we played two – we played a pool play match with um, Milano, Monza, and Verona to see about going into a cup. Yeah. We, we, we went two and – one and two, so we didn't get into the cup. But all of that, like the Champions League stuff and the, the Challenger Cup and the Coppa Italia and all that stuff is based off of last year's results. Right. <clears throat> Well, you got a good season going so far. So uh, um, yeah, I wanted to jump on a lighter side of things, uh, which I did not prep you guys on. So I'm looking for some good natural response here. I know Dante's going to love this one, though. <laughs> <laughs> because, TJ, you're the subject of it. So <laughs> let me go over to my screen share here. And, uh, you know, posted this video of you last night because apparently you got back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back aces. 
But yeah, sure, the video was great, but it was the response from your sister Tegan that really oh, got me. Hey. So please <laughs> cut your hair. <laughs> you respond. Come on, you're supposed to be my biggest supporter, also. Never. And she responds, TJ DeFalco. Oh, I am. You just look like a cabbage patch kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then you respond, I guess that's true, but come on, you know, support without opinions or questions. Of course, I had to throw mine in there, but I don't need to read that. <laughs> so, so with that, I went ahead and uh, was doing some uh, checking out online. So I found oh, a <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. which, uh, you know, this was the version one of it, you know, with the uh, ponytail on top, because if you guys, any of you viewers or listeners watch the video, the ponytail is on top. So that's why we found the TJ DeFalco Cabbage Patch doll. But even <laughs> better. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> I'm gonna need to copy that for our locker room oh as well. Coming out for Christmas 2020 is this doll. Oh! <laughs> It is the TJ DeFalco, Tano, Calipo, Fibo, Valencia, Man Bun. Fibo, too. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, oh, my Lord. So, uh, I'll order two right now. You let me know. Can you speak into this? Because TJ is covering his mouth here. So, thoughts on the, the new toy that's coming out for Christmas 2020? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's absolutely incredible. I'd like to order one for every member of the team here, throw one in the brand. I don't remember signing off on this. I want my rights. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Our Another other outside has a, has a bun, too. So now that TJ's got the bun, the other outside's got the bun, it's, it's perfect. Is that Tebow? Uh, yeah, yeah, Tebow. <laughs> He's always wearing tank tops and stuff like that, so that's perfect. Well, we can just say that that's a Tebow one, not a, not a TJ one. We'll send this to oh, Long Beach oh, State. Tebow than it does me now. Give us another two months, we'll make them the same. No yeah. difference <laughs> Well, what I'll do is I'll say it's a TJ doll. We'll sell it for UC Irvine booster fund. Perfect. <laughs> we'll give 10 500 fans. I love it. I'm all for it. First 500 fans get to throw this on the court. Yeah. Man, that's just is a great marketing. Right? Whatever, whoever you need me to talk to at UCI, you let me know. I'll, I'll, I'm 100% behind that project. Well, hey, guys, I, I, I totally appreciate your time. And I love the insight that you guys are giving towards playing professionally abroad because that's one thing that us Americans don't really get to see. I mean, you have to be a diehard to follow what's going on for any American players, you know, because we've got a ton of D1, 2 athletes that are abroad. I mean, a lot of your teammates, TJ, I mean, Kyle's playing abroad, Josh, and, uh, and, and obviously Dante, you still got Kyle, you have, I mean, guys that are coming out, you know, Dave, you know, so many guys are out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time and sharing your experience out there. And I love the fact that you guys are making a huge impact on the program right now, because you're at third place and uh, I mean, things look up. So um, uh, thanks for coming on the Viral Volley podcast. And, you know, I look forward to, to following you guys. And what is the best way to track what you guys are doing on social media? Go and give your, your uh, handles a, a shout out. Your social media, buddy? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's the other thing. Dante is not, he has a small social media footprint. So if any. Yeah, <laughs> you can reach him by pigeon. Uh, <laughs> right, carrier pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my, I'm pretty bad at updating my social media stuff, um, but just TJ DeFalco on Instagram. Every once I post all the stories from the games before and everything like that, and then I every once in a while I'll throw a post up about trying to go into those that kind of stuff. But other than that, the team's got some stuff too. I don't know what. Yeah, they're, they're probably better to follow the team. It's got to be Tono Calipo Volley on, like on Instagram or something like that. Yeah, and Dante still carrier pigeon. We were going with that. <laughs> or messenger owl which one do you uh, yeah no i uh not a big social media guy myself uh like, what is your major wait just share with us what your major is computer science well isn't it like a social media impacts paper you did like in, before yeah, your yeah. Yeah. come on dude really <laughs> you're not wrong no you shouldn't um, have shared that information with me oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm not a huge social media guy, but you know how to get a hold of me. So anyone that yeah. needs to get a hold of me can go through Rob. We'll flood your phone for me there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anyone, you know, me go through Rob. <laughs> <laughs>
I try my best to get your stuff out there. And uh, definitely TJ DeFalco Volley, uh, Tono Calipo Volley, or Volley Tono Calipo is the Facebook page. And they're doing pretty good uh, stuff on Instagram as well. So I'm trying to get my USA guys out there just so they can see what you guys are doing because you guys are doing some great stuff in Italy. So again, that's TJ DeFalco, Long Beach State alumnus, Dante Chacuarte, UC Irvine alumnus. <laughs> Between the two of them, two programs, seven rings. With four of them with Irvine, three to Long Beach State. I just got to add that in. <laughs> there you go. All right, hey, guys, thank you so much for coming on. Thank Thanks, you, Rob. Thanks, everybody.